So I just want to say how grateful I am to the entrepreneur organization for bringing me in and for giving me those resources to become a businessman. We're going to talk today about gratefulness. And I'm going to talk about my EO experience and how it relates to gratefulness. I went to an MIT program sponsored by EO, and I met a monk. Brother David talked about growing up in Austria during World War II when the Nazis invaded. And uh, to make matters worse, he was a quarter Jewish. So that was a pretty complicated thing. And it was a tough place to be a quarter Jewish and be 17 years old. And uh, he had to basically hide the fact that he was Jewish. He was forced to serve in the Nazi army. Uh, he was able to maneuver his way over to the medical side instead of the uh, fighting side. Uh, but nonetheless, tough time. The things that Brother David endured were probably much more difficult than anything most of us can even imagine enduring. And the way he got through every single day is he just decided to be grateful for something every single day. Even in this time of dark despair, he talked about no windows, no heat, no lights, cold, damp, dark, Nazis. His grandfather was Jewish, and yet he found something to be grateful for every single day. Sometimes it was a song from a bird. Other times, it was dewdrops dripping from a, a, a fresh plant or a hug from a friend, but he found something to be grateful for every day, and he credits that for getting him through that time in his life. It affected him so much that he went on to become a monk, and he dedicated his uh, good part of his monk studies to the concept of gratitude and gratefulness. And he had a, a hypothesis that gratitude was a necessary part to spiritual development, and that gratitude was woven into all great religions. And if it was, then it must be a necessary part to spirituality. And so that became his study for about 20 years. Brother David then went to go live with the great leaders of the Hindu religion, the Buddhist religion, the Muslim religion, and the Jewish religion. And he studied and found gratitude and gratefulness within all these religions. So he proved his hypothesis to be true. And um, he came back and wrote a book about it. So that was kind of Brother David's story. And I got to say, it was interesting. It didn't change my life. He went on to finish the story with a, a dream of his, which was, here I am, a monk, talking about gratefulness to a bunch of business owners. And what I'd like to appeal to you all, Brother David said, is, is there a way that we could bring this concept of gratitude and gratefulness into corporate cultures? Could we make gratitude a core value within corporations? Could we use business to spread gratitude through the employees, through the customers, and make the world a better place through business and gratitude? That was sort of his dream, and that's why he showed up to this meeting at MIT. Again, interesting, kind of a really interesting uh, perspective from a different angle. Didn't change my life, but I was happy to hear it. The cool part was Brother David hung out. This was a three-day program, and he sat in the audience and listened to the other speakers. I got to make sure I could go sit next to Brother David, because I like Obi-Wan Kenobi, so I figured I'd like to sit next to Brother David, because he kind of reminded me of him. And I said to Brother David, I, I got to ask him lots of questions. The one question that I asked him that was really profound to me, the answer, the question seemed a little cocky and maybe arrogant, but I risked to ask it anyway. I said to Brother David, I said, you know, my mom went to Catholic Church when I was young. And they have a 12-step process to get to heaven. And they would tell us about it at church. My wife, she went to Baptist church, and I went to her church also, and they had their 12-step process to get to heaven. It was a different process. And I imagine the Muslim and the Buddhist and the Jewish, they all have their 12-step process that are all different and specific paths to heaven. So I said to Brother David, I said, hey, I'm confused. I don't know which religion to kind of go to because, you know, I want to get to heaven. Not, not right now, but at some point I'd like to get to heaven. And I want to make sure I don't follow the wrong 12-step process. Boy, that would be a tragedy. And he looks at me, and he leans back with his Obi-Wan Kenobi robe, and he folds his hands into a diamond, and he says, heaven is available to the Muslim and the Jew. Heaven is even available to the Catholic. And he laughs because he's Catholic. And then he goes on to say, heaven is even available to the atheist. But often the atheist doesn't find heaven because the atheist is full of conflict, full of pushing away. He goes on to say that religions are belief systems. 
and belief systems are important for most people to find faith. But faith, faith is trust in life. Trust that everything life brings you is a gift, even when it seems like it's a pile of shit. And then he laughs again. Didn't know monks cursed. He goes on to say, if you can truly embrace adversity in your life as a gift, if you can trust that life is bringing you a gift, even when it is not obvious that that's so, then you remove your heart and your soul from anxiety and stress and conflict, and you replace it with peace and creativity. If you can trust that everything life brings you as a gift, you can have heaven on earth. He goes on to say, if you can trust that everything life brings you as a gift, then you will trust that even death is a gift. Because after all, what does death bring everyone eventually? Well, I'm sorry, what does life bring everyone eventually but death? And if you can trust that even death is a gift, then surely you will go to heaven. And then Brother David rocks back, folds his hands into his diamond. And I have to tell you, I'm not real religious, and I never, ever cry. At that moment, I started to cry uncontrollably. And I remember thinking, what the heck are you doing, Barrett? And Brother David, I didn't know what was happening, but he must have, because he reached out and gave me a hug, and he said, I see you understand. And it was a total spiritual experience for me, brought on by YEO and, and EO and, what it, and the experiences it gave me. And, being in that MIT program. I've never looked at adversity the same way again. I've got so much more peace in my heart and in my soul, even though I've still got difficulties and stress in my life. And don't get me wrong, I still get angry and frustrated, but I can control it much better. And I can find possibilities so much better, even in dark, difficult times. So I want you to think about for a second what are the two things that are most precious to you? Most people in our demographics, I get one of three, I get two or three answers. My wife or my husband, my kids, or my health. Once in a while I get freedom. For me, it's my love of my wife and my children. And so the next question I want you to answer to yourself, how vulnerable are those things? How easily could you lose those things tomorrow? For me, I hope it doesn't happen, but I could lose the love of my wife and I could lose my children tomorrow. If that's true, then shouldn't we be truly grateful for every second we get to talk to them on the phone at our break? Shouldn't we be grateful for every minute that they want, the kids want us to get down on our hands and knees and play cars, or our wife wants us to take out the trash, whatever things that we just don't feel like doing at the moment? Shouldn't we really be grateful for those moments? And shouldn't we let them know and really bring it into our heart. And if we can do that, we'll be so much more present when we're with those things that are most precious to us. And that's hard for us to do a lot of the times because we're entrepreneurs, we're, we're crazy. We take on 10 times more than the average person. You know, we're doing the Blackberry, taking phone calls and playing matchboxes at the same time. If it was your last hour, you wouldn't do that. You'd be present with that child. So that really taught me something. It changed my relationship with my children and my wife. You know, my first time I tried to test this concept of gratitude in adversity, it was a little tiny thing. Um, I have an old Corvette, as you see there, that's my Corvette. It doesn't have a gas gauge that works, so it runs out of gas occasionally. And I also am a little overly optimistic in how far I can go on a tank of gas. So same as bank accounts with us sometimes, right, as we run businesses. So, so I'm driving home in the rain, I'm late for dinner, my wife just does not like me to be late for dinner. She takes the time to put dinner on the table, she expects me to be there on time. I'm running five minutes late. As I'm going up a hill in the rain, it runs out of gas. I just come back from Brother David. My first reaction is to cuss, to punch the steering wheel, and to just be very, very frustrated. And I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be grateful for this. I don't know why and I don't know how, but I'm going to choose to be grateful in this moment. I get out of the car because it wasn't a big enough shoulder. I was going to get run over by a truck. And I got out in the middle of the road. And one of the things I do is I carry a camera with me and I try to take a picture of something I'm grateful for every single day. So I chose that this was going to be the thing I was going to take a picture of that day. I didn't know why I was going to be grateful. I just trusted in life like Brother David told me. I called my daughter up, 17-year-old daughter. I said, hey, you know, I need you to bring some gas and help me get the car home because it ran out of gas. She's laughing at me. She shows up at a gas can, we're putting gas in the back of the car. She's making fun of me, 
greatest jokes in the world, and we're laughing together. And I had this little bonding experience and laughing with my 17-year-old daughter on the side of the highway. Now, that doesn't happen a lot with a 17-year-old daughter. So that was special. Maybe that was the gift, I said to myself. And I wouldn't have had that gift had I been angry and frustrated. She might have still shown up at the gas, but I wouldn't have been open for her laughing. I would have gotten mad at her for teasing me. I then come home 45 minutes late for dinner. Dinner was done. Dishes were done. My plate's still sitting there with all the food on it. It's cold. And uh, normally I'd walk in that door and I'd say, hey, honey, it wasn't my fault. You know, you can't be mad at me this time. And, you know, and I would be ready to fight and ready to argue that I'm not, I shouldn't be in trouble here. But instead I walked in and I, said, I just said, listen, I'm so sorry I didn't make it home for dinner. I know you worked hard on it. I want you to know how grateful I am that you put this dinner together for me. How grateful I am that Leah was able to come pick me up. And we laughed. And I'm okay that this food's cold. Could you get the kids and could we all sit down at the table? I know you already ate. I'd like to eat and just talk to y'all. And so instead of being a night of fighting with my wife and probably going to bed, not talking to each other, it was a night of celebrating our family and the love we have for each other. The events that happened to me were the same. The outcome was much different. And I changed one thing, and that was my perspective. I chose to trust that it was a gift. It's a little thing. I'm not saying... You know, the Nazis invaded and I was Jewish, but my car ran out of gas. My wife was going to be mad at me that she'd made dinner. Point is, trust and faith and gratitude are not things we get to by facts. They're things we get to by choice. We just choose to have faith. We choose to trust in life. And you can choose that right now. And I chose that that day on the side of the road. I want to talk about bringing gratitude into your companies as Brother David had a dream, that if we can bring gratitude as one of our core values within our companies, the world maybe could be a better place. And we have the power to change the world. We heard that from many entrepreneurs up on this stage today. And I think if we do bring this concept of gratitude into our companies, our employees will have a different experience, our customers will have a different experience, and we will have a different experience with bigger opportunities. You get opportunities from adversity. I'm grateful for adversity in my company, and so is everybody else. It's one of our core values. We talk about it. We start every staff meeting off with, what are you grateful for? Our building burned down to the ground. I was a chemical fertilizer application guy. Had a half a million dollars worth of fertilizer in that barn. It burned down to the ground. I lost it all. It was not insured. I had a true half a million dollar loss. Devastating for my company. My dad took this picture. He came over, put his arm around me, and he was crying. And he says, you know, I'm so sorry that you had to have this happen to you today. I said, Dad, don't be sorry. Nobody got hurt. And this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. This is a great day. And he says, why? I said, I don't know. But I trust <laughs> that this is a great opportunity. And I will accept wherever this takes me. From a, pros from a perspective of having a passion for possibilities and to be grateful for this adversity and trusting that life will bring me the opportunities. So what am I looking for? I'm not looking for obstacles. I'm not looking for problems. I'm not looking for people to blame. I'm just looking for opportunities and potential. And what do I find? Opportunities and potential. You know, I've built and sold two lawn care companies spreading chemical fertilizers. Nice businesses, but at the end of the day, maybe they were not making the world a better place, a little more pollution. My chemical fertilizer all burned up. I had to go find an alternative. I was able to find a very unique natural organic bionutritional fertilizer that I could afford to buy. This forced me into that. I ended up selling my second company and buying the IP behind that fertilizer. That's my, next, that's my latest company, my third startup. I believe this will be my $100 million opportunity. I believe this is the biggest thing I've ever done. I believe this will change my industry and change the world, reduce nitrates, phosphates, pesticides, clean up water, and still allow people to have green grass. I wouldn't have found that opportunity had my building not burned down. I wouldn't have found that opportunity had I bitched and moaned about the guy that set the fire accidentally, who's still my friend today. Instead, I went and looked for possibilities. Look, business is hard, especially these days, right? It was easy there for a few years. But these days, it's hard. We get our teeth knocked in every day. You know, we can't control what happens to us. We can only control how we respond to what happens to us. But if we respond with gratitude, 
will find potential and possibilities within our adversities. You know, as I do my lifeline, it's an EO exercise where we go from zero to 40. For me, it's zero to 40. And uh, we chart our high points and our low points, and it's a line graph that goes up and down. And I wonder if you notice this next time you're doing your lifeline. The lowest points in my life, the points that I thought were the worst times in my life, were almost always followed up within two to four years of some of the highest points in my life. Now, I face these things with optimism, with resiliency, one of the key traits to being an entrepreneur. If that's true, then what is adversity? Maybe it's a leading indicator to success. And the bigger the adversity, the bigger the potential for growth, the bigger the potential for success. So if this is compelling to you, I have a workshop tomorrow where I'm going to talk about how to find adversity in your business and turn it into opportunities, and I have a process to do that. I really want to sincerely thank you for allowing me to be up here today, allowing me to be part of the EO community for the last 14 years, and uh, thank you very much.